this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, Wolf. It's Windows Pro time. Right, tell you other champs. Now, let's see how to undervolt your laptop. All you do is go to your friend Google, all right? Google. Google is my friend. Doesn't it even matter if you type it right. You just go Google and then just type it. XTU. See if it does it. XTU. Boom. Oh, yes, XTU. That's all I have to do. Download and install this XTU. Now, of course, you have to have a supported CPU. So check out the supported list there. If you're running, say, an Ultrabook and it says unsupported um, product or whatever when you try and install it, I'll leave a link to an older version that will probably work with your Intel CPU if this one doesn't work because what they've done is they dropped the support for a lot of, you know, CPUs. Uh, so you have to use the older version. But, yeah, I think most of you, if you've got one of those H-series processors, yeah, you'll be able to do this. Just install it, follow the prompts, blah, blah, blah. You know how to install software. All right, so let's find out how to undervolt. Now, you can undervolt with stuff like Throttle Stop is a really popular uh, product to undervolt with, but... The thing about throttle stop is, for a novice, it's a bit harder to use throttle stop. So I would recommend Intel XTU. It's very simple. It's very easy. So what we see here is just, um, yeah, this is inside XTU. And what we want to do is undervolt your CPU. Now, this is the i9 of the XPS 15. So I can not only undervolt, I can actually overclock. So I can overclock this CPU. Yes, five points. 6 gigahertz yes no we don't want to overclock it by that much of course but um i can actually overclock as well now probably if you don't have an i9 you won't be able to uh overclock like this so i'll just reset that i'll just go to profiles go to default show profiles at the top and this is how it is stocked this i9 and as you'll see here what i'll try and do is raise that limit here of how fast i want it to go it's up to you if you do this or not this is like a turbo boost the dell it's baked in it's going to go back to 56 watts anyway so it's actually useless doing on a dell one thing you'll note here is on the i9 we've got 107 watts with the xps 15 on the i7 we only got 100 so that's one thing the i9 does over the i7 now you don't have to do this but i always do i just put it up to 100 because yeah you know it will either be baked in or it won't be or let you do it basically the temperatures will control everything anyway so that's applied i don't need to apply it now but yeah i just do anyway so undervolting this is the main part what's the downsides to undervolting nothing the only downside is your system will crash you'll become unstable because there's not enough voltage to keep it up okay the cpu will be starved of voltage, you'll get a voltage fluctuation, it'll just crash. A lot of people have asked me, will it damage your system? No, it's actually good for your system to be undervolted. Less voltage into your CPU is better. It's a better thing. Now, the reason you can undervolt these things is they actually give them more voltage than they need in order to make sure they're stable and that the CPU always stays up so the system doesn't crash, right? So there's always a bit to play with. Now, I recommend here, start off with maybe 60 60 millivolts i've gone to minus 60 millivolts there and you apply you can run a benchmark run a benchmark like prime 95 80 64 or something like that or just game or whatever actually where's a benchmark in here there is a benchmark in here just go here to stress test and just go yeah stress test cpu you can stress test the memory and just do it for five minutes and then start right this is a stress test and it's going to stress test your system it's going to pump some power into it also what you should do is know that you know even if your system sleeps sometimes when it goes into a low power state it'll crash so maybe disable sleep when you're under vault that's a good thing to do or maybe just check if it does crash but if it does crash disable sleep also uh plug in stuff like uh plug in peripherals usb stuff and put the power in and then pull the power out because when you you know plug things in and take them out and then when you put the power in and take it out you get sort of like 
micro fluctuations in the current of the system like there'd be some voltage droopage just through the system like the tolerances aren't always like a hundred percent and that fluctuation in the voltage can crash your system so i've had systems that have been 100 percent stable in like a, a stress test and then i'll plug something in or i'll pull the power out or plug it back in and that sort of fluctuation in the voltage crashed it it wasn't like the system wasn't stable it's just that little fluctuation so it's not just stress test it as i'm doing here you got to make sure that you can plug stuff in you got to make sure it can sleep properly just put it to sleep if it crashes when it sleeps you're going to have to disable it it's going to do that all the whole time so i've just stopped this whatever i already know that this can do like 100 millivolts or no it actually does 120 you know you're going to have to keep on putting that up slowly until you reach a nice point maybe start at 100 if you want to be adventurous it might crash at 100 but yeah it'll be a quicker way to do it so i'll go to apply if i run a stress test it'll do it at 100 I already know this cpu can do 100 it actually can do about 130 um it will still crash every now and then at 130 so 120 i think is the perfect for this some are crazy you could do 150 some people tell me they're doing 250 uh, unless i see that i don't believe it the most i've ever had is like 170 minus 170 so yeah this is how you undervolt if you're lucky enough to have an iron iron you could just oh, boost it up to five gigahertz um yeah go for it have a go at it undervolting also increases your battery life it makes your system cooler you'll be able to boost up those clocks higher undervolting is a great thing and just do it to your system work out what the optimum level is for your system it's not going to harm it it's just going to make your system run better uh, even like benefits of lower fan noise and stuff like that it's just yeah it's really good oh and don't forget you can actually save these profiles not only do you apply them you can actually save the profile and then save it give it a name or whatever and then you know you save it i've already made one minus 120 and i've saved that and then you can always go back to it so once you get it to a steady state you can do that and then you know try for a bit more and then if that doesn't work go back to that save once you've applied it it'll be there and next time you restart it'll be there automatically so you don't have to do anything in that regard yeah that's the great thing about pcs right you can undervolt you can get the more performance it's it's awesome and if you get a silicon lottery uh awesome and let me know down there in the comments how much minus millivolts you can get in your system catch you next one tally ho